Hey everybody, so I'm about to embark on something that I think is really exciting. Um, I'm about to conduct an experiment. It's going to be an experiment that I think will help to confirm why it is the text of the New Testament is reliable. And this is basically going to be an experiment in the discipline of textual criticism. Now, textual criticism is the discipline in which people will um, compare and contrast copies of a document in order to reconstruct the original document when the original no longer exists. And this is something that scholars and historians have to do for just about any ancient document. We do not have the original writings of Josephus, Plato, or Aristotle, or any of those ancient writers. All we have left from those writers are copies of copies of copies of their original writings. And so scholars have to engage in textual criticism in order to, um, to, to, to determine what the original writing would have been. And this is the same for the New Testament. We do not have the original writings of Paul or John or Peter or any of the authors of any New Testament letters. All we have are manuscripts, tons of manuscripts. We have cataloged over 5,000 Greek manuscripts and portions of manuscripts of the New Testament. And just like with any other ancient writing, none of these New Testament manuscripts are exactly the same. They all differ with one another in one way or another. And so New Testament scholars have to engage in textual criticism by comparing and contrasting these manuscripts to try and reconstruct what they believe the original writing would have been. Now here's why I'm doing this experiment. In our day, a lot of people are casting doubt upon the reliability of the text of the New Testament. They're saying things like the theology of the New Testament developed over time, scribes were inserting their own things in there, and it's basically become so corrupt that we have no way of knowing what, what the writers actually wrote or what Jesus actually taught. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put New Testament textual criticism to the test. I am going to reproduce on a much smaller scale the same process through which New Testament documents have been transmitted over history, and then I'm going to engage in textual criticism to see how accurate it can actually be. And here's how the experiment is going to work. The book of Titus in the New Testament is 659 words long. I had a friend of mine go online and find a short story that's about the same length. He actually found a short story that's 666 words long. So this is something comparable to a New Testament letter that would have been copied by first century Christians and other Christians throughout history. Now let me make this clear. The story that he chose is something I have never read before. I have no clue what it's about. I have no clue what it says. I don't know any details about this story. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have people make copies of that story and then I'm going to have other people make copies of those copies and other people make copies of those copies and so on. And just so you can understand how I'm going to try to make this comparable to the transmission of the New Testament, I want to show you what I'm calling my textual transmission chart. Okay, so here's my textual transmission chart. Let me explain this to you. Each circle that you see represents a copy that's going to be made. This top circle up here represents the original, okay? Now, coming from that original, there's going to be four copies that are made, okay? Follow the lines. Each of those copies represent what, what we have with the New Testament, which was what we call uh, text types or text families. That's groupings of manuscripts that developed over time based upon geographical locations such as um, Europe, North Africa, the Middle East, that kind of thing. So there's four different text types that New Testament scholars have. Each of those text types carry their own traditions, their own variants, their own differences within the manuscripts, okay? So what I'm trying to do is have four different text types to represent New Testament uh, transmission of the text. Now, as you can see, after each of those four copies are made, I'm having three different lines of transmission come from each of those copies. And so what I have here is copies being made of those, but they're not just straight lines. I'm making it so it's sort of random copying going on. So you see this one here is copied and then it goes down, but then there's also another copy made of that and two copies made of that one. This one is only those two copies. This one only has three. This one branches off like that. This one branches off in all kinds of different ways. And this one's more of a zigzag. So none of them are being copied the exact same way. So I'm trying to replicate the randomness of New Testament textual transmission. Now you're probably wondering why some of these circles are black, some are white, and some are only half black and half white. Let me explain that really quick. So with the New Testament, we have what we could call imperfect lines of transmission. That means we don't have all of the documents 
um, that have been copied. We don't have every single manuscript that was ever written. So all the ones that you see that are blacked out here on the chart represent manuscripts or copies that I will not use in my attempt to reconstruct the original. What that means is this one that's blacked out is the original, right? Which means I will not use the original, obviously, when I'm trying to reconstruct the original. That would make the whole experiment um, pointless. <laughs> but I'm not even going to use the first copies of that original because with the New Testament, not only do we not have the original, we most likely don't even have the first copies of the original. And then coming from each of those copies, there's other ones that I have randomly selected to not use in my reconstruction process or in my textual criticism. This is because I want to put myself in the same place that New Testament scholars are in. So now let me explain these circles that are halfway crossed out. Not all of the manuscripts we have of the New Testament are complete. Um, some manuscripts that we have are only fragments, some are only a few pages long, some only contain half of a letter, some contain just a few books of the Bible. That's what these half-crossed out circles represent. They represent portions of manuscripts. So the ones that are halfway crossed out represent the copies that I'm only going to use a portion of, meaning I'll, when I get it in, I'll maybe rip the piece of paper in half and only use the top half of that copy and set the other half aside, and I won't use it when I'm doing textual criticism. These open circles, the ones that are not colored in, represent full copies that I will use, because just like with the New Testament, we do have some full copies of entire books. We also have full copies of the entire New Testament. So this just helps to give you an understanding of, of how I'm going to have these copies being copied and then how I'm going to use those copies when I try to do my textual criticism, okay? Now obviously all of these copies that are going to be made are going to be made by hand. And what I am hoping is that that will give me something similar to like what we have in the New Testament, which is scribes made errors because they were making copies by hand and people make mistakes. So I'm hoping that every single copy that's made is different from every other copy. But the great thing about the transmission of the New Testament text and what I'm trying to replicate here is that we have multiple lines of transmission. So not all of the copies are being corrupted in the exact same way. And this is what allows scholars to compare and contrast uh, manuscripts from the different text types and the different families and different lines of transmission to be able to determine what the original said. But not only did scribes make accidental errors when they were copying the New Testament, some scribes even intentionally changed the text to fit their own theology or to make it more understandable to them. So in order to replicate that, I'm going to randomly select two people from each text type or line of transmission to intentionally corrupt the text in some way. Again, I'm really trying to make this as similar as possible to the New Testament. And so once I get all of the copies in, um, I am going to engage in textual criticism and I am going to attempt to reconstruct what the original document would have said. And when I finish doing that, once I come up with what I think the original said, I'm going to compare it to the original. The first time I'll ever see the original is when I compare it to the original. And I'm going to see how many differences there are. Then I'm going to compile all my data and make another video sharing the results with everybody. Now, the results that I'm expecting to have from this is that there will be, um, what I'm hoping, that there will be no differences at all between what I come up with and the original, or if there are differences, that they will be only a few insignificant differences that really don't affect the meaning of the text at all, and therefore confirming um, the validity of the discipline of textual criticism, and also confirming, I think, the reliability of the New Testament. So I'm pumped to start this experiment, but here's the thing. If I'm the one that's going to be doing the textual criticism, I cannot be involved in the copying process. I literally need to have no clue what the original document said, and I have to base all of my knowledge of what the original said based upon the imperfect copies that I get through these imperfect lines of transmission, because that's the situation that New Testament scholars are in. And this means I need volunteers. I need volunteers who are willing to make copies for me. 52 volunteers volunteers to be exact. And that's the reason why I'm making this video to see if you'd be willing to give maybe a half hour or 45 minutes of your time uh, to make a handwritten copy for me so that I can complete this experiment and help people understand that we can trust the text of the New Testament. And if you're willing to be involved, what I'm going to do is plug your name in here to this other textual transmission volunteer fill-in chart. And so it's an exact copy of the, the chart that I have written here on the big piece of paper. And I'll fill your name in in one of these bubbles and that represents where you're going to be in the copying process. And then once the copy that you're going to be copying from is ready, I'm 
I'm going to send that to you along with some instructions on the protocol for how to make the copy. And then once you finish making your copy, you'll just have to send that back to me. So really it's not too difficult and there's not too much that you have to do on your end. So if you're uh, willing to be involved and you want to help me out, please let me know. Now this experiment is probably going to take a while to finish. I'm expecting it might take a few months to get all the copies done and to also spend all the time um, uh, comparing the copies to try and reconstruct the original and then to finally compare what I came up with with the original, compare and contrast that and make a final video where I show all the results. It's, it's going to take a while. So I also created a Facebook page to keep you up to date as to where I'm at in the process. And on that Facebook page, I'm also going to be posting other interesting articles and videos and um, educational material if you want to learn more about New Testament textual criticism. So definitely check that out. The page is called Ryan's Textual Criticism Experiment. So if you're interested in helping me out in making a copy, please just let me know. Thank you so much for your participation.